Hello and welcome to the Barca Lounger Limited. I'm Ashley Bernhardt, joined by Nicole Anania. We are your two co-hosts of this podcast about limited series in television. This week we will be covering Russian Doll Season 2. We will get into spoilers on it, so be aware of that. Uh, Before we get into that, we will talk briefly about uh, my initial impression on the first episode of Stranger Things Season 4, and Nicole watched... uh, an M. Night Shyamalan movie that I have refused (laughs) to watch (laughs) called uh, Old. Uh, And if this is your first time listening, we are following Under the Banner of Heaven from week to week. So if you are interested in that show on Hulu, uh, starring Andrew Garfield and Daisy Edgar Jones, go check out our previous episodes. We covered uh, episode uh, one through five so far. Uh, And next week, we will cover the uh, last episode and the finale. This week, we're taking a little break. I have some events uh, coming up in my life that require uh, a lot of attention. (laughs) So this is getting less attention. So I thought we'd do something fun uh, and cover Russian Doll. And we loved season one. It's not a limited series, obviously, because it got a season two. But we really still wanted to cover it. If you want more from us, if you want to communicate with us, engage with us, go find us over on Twitter at BarkaLoungerPod. And we can also be found on Instagram Instagram at the Lounger Podcast. Go check those things out. I can't say that I'm going to be super active uh, this next week. I don't think Nicole will be either because she is uh, doing this event with me. (laughs) So uh, the two of my apologies in advance if, if we haven't been super active on those but we will still get you uh, the episodes. And that's what really matters because that's what this podcast is about, is the podcast. So uh, yeah, check out all those things if you're interested and uh, stick around for the rest of this episode if you are interested in uh, listening to our season two Russian Doll review. So uh, we mentioned last week the trailer of Stranger Things season four. Uh, I talked about it a little bit. I really enjoyed the trailer, so I was very, very much looking forward to season four. I, and I mentioned this last week too, I take Stranger Things, I've always taken Stranger Things as entertainment and fun. So I know there's some people who are like, season two was blah, and season three was much better, and I don't know, it went way downhill from season one. But uh, if I'm honest, I don't think the quality has really waned all that much (laughs) Um, because I'm entertained and I enjoy the characters and I've enjoyed everything about the show. It's not like I've ever had a huge gripe with Stranger Things. So I'm also not like overly critical of it. (laughs) Uh, That being said, season four, episode one, I watched over the weekend and it's good. It's entertaining. I mean, it was a slow start. Uh, They're introducing, you know, the characters now in their kind of new lives. Uh, Half of the gang has moved to, um, I think it's like Nevada or something. Um, (laughs) I'm not sure the exact state. It seems kind of desert-esque. But it's it's, so it's their lives, I guess, kind of transitioning without the others uh, and also becoming teenagers and not just middle school kids anymore now that they're high schoolers, which I don't know if they were in season three. Uh, I honestly can't tell you. (laughs) Maybe they were in their freshman year. Um, But if you care about the characters, I think you're going to enjoy the start of this season. I think that's what it's about. It's about telling us where these characters are now and how they're struggling. And we don't really get into too much of, you know, upside down and and all the uh, fantastical horror aspects yet. I mean, by the end of the episode, we're getting to it and we get brief instances of it. Uh, But yeah, they do a lot of um, just focusing on being a teenager and the transitions that they're having. And it is actually pretty endearing, I felt. Because I care about these characters. And I guess that's what I really enjoy about Stranger Things is it's okay if the plot is not always solid. I'm not in it for them, you know? Like, because this is 80s 80s nostalgia. Most of the time, we've already seen all this 
this shit already. So I don't really need to care too much about the story. I think the driving force of Stranger Things are the characters. I think that's a nice way to look at it. And maybe this is that show for you. And for other people, this is their thing that they pick apart. Like we do with everything else, basically. (laughs) And this is the one that you just give yourself like, okay, just enjoy it. You know, don't like dissect, don't compare season to season. Like you were mentioning before, uh, I had seen a lot of discourse about that. And we talked about how like, I didn't see season three yet. And a lot of people were like, oh, it's, you know, like, it's so much better than season two. Um, But I agree with you, too. Like, I felt like as I was watching it, season two maybe wasn't as good as season one, but it wasn't bad. And I didn't really care that much. You know, Mm -hmm. like, it wasn't. It didn't make it worse. (laughs) It didn't make it worse. Yeah, I was just like, season one was so solid. And I think it's such a great concept. And it really does appeal to me. And I think a wide scope of people with the nostalgia and the supernatural and, you know. Um, so I'm definitely going to watch season four. I just got to watch all of season three. <laughs> <laughs> I think season three is really incredibly enjoyable. Cause I'll be honest, I don't remember much about season two and season three. I yeah. am pretty spot on about all the plot points and the characters. And so it really did stick with me. Cause how long ago was season three? Don't we, haven't we had like a two or three year gap or something like that now? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously, I'm trying to remember how pre-pandemic it was. I don't know if it came out in 2019, possibly. Mm, I should, I could look it up, but I'm not not going to right now. (laughs) Um, But like, it's basically like the kids being 14 and 15, 16 year olds types. And now all the actors are like 18 to 20. (laughs) So it had to be a a few years. Uh, But I'm enjoying season four, the, at least the first episode. Uh, it, they're definitely going um, with some. You can you can see some of the '80s things they're calling back to. The episode, the first episode, is very Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, it's very obviously uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, and they even have a little like. Uh, there's a a scene uh, in a a blockbuster type movie place. And there's Freddy Krueger, a cardboard cutout of Freddy Krueger in the corner of a a scene of a shot. And then it it ends, how the episode ends is really Nightmare on Elm Street. (laughs) And even the music, how they end the credits is like the score of Nightmare on Elm Street. So uh, that's definitely an influence. And I wonder if they're, they're going to roll with that Nightmare on Elm Street influence and those kind of uh, horror flicks of the 80s. wonder if that's their thing this season. Well, I'd be supportive of it. Uh, I watched the first, I'll be clear, the first Nightmare on Elm Street every year <laughs> <laughs> on Halloween. It's like, there's just something, again, with the like nostalgia of it and sometimes like a slight cheesiness. You know, you're watching it, you're like, what is going on? <laughs> like, <this laughs> also, I'm scared. Um, so I'd be excited if they were doing that, but you know, the whole show obviously always feels like it's references a lot of the time. Uh, they're very clear about like, this is what inspired us. Like, this is what we're referencing. I appreciate that too. When a show is not trying to like, not hide it, but you know, <laughs> like where people need to be like, I wonder like where they got the inspiration. They're just like this, literally this, like something that you know very well. Um, and side note, I did look it up. It, third season came out in 2019. The whole thing dropped uh, on wow. 4th of July. I remember that now. They were all building up to 4th of July. Uh, yeah, that's a while ago now. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a while ago now. So, yeah, it is strange to see. All the actors are, you said, I guess they're in their 20s or? 18 to 20, I would say. I think, like, Millie Bobby Brown is 18. And I think they're all around the same age. So... Uh, yeah yeah uh they uh, you know what though it doesn't they look older but the our history of how we cast american teenagers has always been like 30 year olds 25 to 30 year olds so like they look like teenagers to me it's not like you're like wow they really grew up 
Uh, I think they still look like teenagers. Like, I don't know. It doesn't affect me. I mean, if you watched Riverdale or anything like that, it's like these, (laughs) these are people clearly in their twenties. And I mean, so it doesn't bother me. One tree hill. Oh yeah. uh, So you're older. You're just like, there was no way I was ever going to be that attractive. (laughs) (laughs) Also, they're just all beautiful, but uh, did not realize that these are, grown ass adults yeah (laughs) that's why i can't look that way (laughs) uh yeah but i'd say it's a it's a good start and i did want to watch the next episode uh i was like if it wasn't already 11 at night when we we finished the first episode i would have kept watching if i wasn't trying to get beauty sleep and be a good adult (laughs) Which it didn't matter anyway, because I was still fucking up. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I bother trying to stick to a bedtime. It's useless. Anyway, that's a personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, so I see you had mentioned, I guess, that. So the last two parts aren't going to be released until July 1st. That's yes. Like, guess, yeah. Uh, that's interesting to me, especially because the other episodes are all an hour and change. They're longer episodes. You know what? I honestly, it's good that they have all the time they need. I don't want a repeat of Game of Thrones. So (laughs) I know this isn't their series finale, even though it feels like it should be, which is, I mentioned that last week again, that I don't understand. Like, why are we doing another season? It feels like we, this should be the finale season, but whatever. Um, But I... I'm glad that the the uh, is it the, the Duffy brothers Duffer brothers why not Duffy yeah. Duffy brothers I'm glad that they're all in still I'm glad that they have plenty to write and they're not cutting things or they're not trying to rush things and I'm totally okay with that I'm totally okay with that because we don't need another Game of Thrones finale on our hands we really don't <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would like I would I will never complain that something is too long i've actually complained before that things are too long uh but the if the alternative is too short uh, give me the long all the time yeah Yeah. so i'd rather extra stuff in there that i don't really need than you didn't give me enough to understand or wrap up a story which talking about russian doll season two I'll leave it at that before we get into <laughs> get into it. Uh, so yeah, I definitely am excited for. I'm still excited. Episode one has me has me excited for the rest of the season. I'm into it. So definitely check out Stranger Things season four if uh, if you were hesitant on it. But I don't know who would be hesitant on Stranger Things. I know Nicole's got to watch season three. Like that's an absolute. Like Nicole really does need to watch season three. It's good. <laughs> No, yeah, I do. I, I imagine if I just skipped all of season three. <laughs> just like, I <laughs> just know, gone straight to four. I don't like. I'll be watching things with my mom, and she'll literally be like, "Why don't we just like skip to the next episode?" I'm like, "What are you talking? <laughs> like, you guys were not enjoying it. You're not enjoying it. Like, but literally, she'll be like, let's just skip to the end. Like, let's just go to the finale.' And I, it literally seems like sociopathic to me. I'm like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, what's the point of watching a TV show?" <laughs> But I'm sure there is going to be somebody that just decides to watch season four, uh, which fine. But uh, that's craziness to me. We do it. I mean, they give you a pretty solid, like on Netflix, if you look, they give you really solid, like five minute recaps of each season. Mm-hmm. So you could probably get by. Yeah. Su- surprisingly. <laughs> Uh, but at that point, I would not recommend it though again I say it's like it's about the characters and if you're not experiencing what they're experiencing I don't think plot points are really that really matter especially how season four is starting off with these characters because they're all in turmoil I really think you need the character development from season three to appreciate what's going on in season four I'm sure you do so I will watch it I will watch it the, the whole third season and then jump into the fourth. But like you said, it is like long episodes. They are. Yeah. Are. By the end of the summer, I'll probably be through three and four if I know myself. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. There'll be a long weekend. Yeah. Uh, but so um, I guess in the vein of horror, 
Uh, Nicole watched old this M. Night Shyamalan uh, film. I know... Who is uh, Eliza... Help me out with her last name, isn't it, right? From Sharp Objects and Little Women. Oh, Scanlon. There you go. Eliza Scanlon's in old, right? She is, which, like... This is the only I thing like, that appealed to me, yeah. like, when I saw these trailers. Because I honestly saw these trailers and I went, nope. <laughs> well, I was yeah. like, no, thank you. This seems weird and edgy or I don't know. I was just like, no, thank you. And also the trailers got shoved down my throat whenever they were showing them in theaters and I was seeing movies. Uh, but now it's on what? HBO Max? Did you watch it on? I watched it just, yeah, like on TV on HBO. It was the Saturday night movie. I do that every now and then. Like, this is a Saturday night movie. Uh, watched it with my mother and she was like, oh, it's old. And I was like, God, I don't know. And, and she's like, what? And I'm like, that just looks so bad. But then I thought, I haven't watched like a Lifetime movie in a while. I have that craving for like laughing at something, you know, like when it's really bad. So I was like, let me give it a shot. It could be fun. Like, if you've ever watched The Happening, which is another M. Night Shyamalan movie where the plants are making people kill themselves and Mark Wahlberg is like talking to a plant. That's what it's like, about? That. I've never seen it. I don't, I honestly think I've only seen Signs and um, The Sixth Sense. I think those are the only M. Night Shyamalan. Maybe The Village. Was that an M. Night Shyamalan movie? Yeah. With uh, Bryce Dallas Howard? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I've seen, I guess, three of his movies. But that was, like, in his heyday. Yeah, did you see Split? No, I heard those are really good, though. It is. Re- that one's really... I will say that that was, like, the... That was people being like, oh, I'm not Shyamalan. Like, we forgot you could make a really good... <laughs> like, every now and then you throw you just surprise us. Uh, that was good. But I'm like, okay, let me give this a chance. Like, yeah, The Happening to me is probably his worst one. Um <laughs> And yeah, there's just like a famous scene of Mark Wahlberg talking to a plant being like, we don't want to hurt you. Like just talking to a plant. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely like the dumbest thing. Um, so I was like, let me watch this. Uh, aside from Gamlin, um, Thomas and McKenzie's in it from Last Night in Soho. Oh, really? Uh, which, I did yeah, not. Which they like, didn't okay. see her in the trailers. She plays the older version of the daughter. You know, like so the maybe that's Asian. why. I, I had no idea it was her either. Um, she also has an American accent, basically. So um, interesting. Yeah, Alex Wolf is in it. You know, hereditary, like people He's that are great. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they did a good job. The problem is like, <laughs> also like the concept I do find intriguing, but like M Night Shyamalan, and it has been noted several times by critics. Uh, he really has sometimes a problem with like dialogue, and this movie it was just like so apparent <laughs> sometimes like things would be said or lines and then also some of the actors so it was like the combination of the act like the delivery of the line but the line was also not well written to begin with but <laughs> some of the actors outside of maybe the people that i mentioned it was like certain choices that were made where i just had to laugh um i laughed a lot during the movie oh no <laughs> which is not this thing is like it's not to say though that Again, the concept isn't good, and there are moments of, like, pure horror in it where you're mm. just, like, it, like, things happen very fast. Like, once they, like, get to this beach or whatever. It's like a family. We start with that main for the two kids and the couple, and, like, they're probably going to maybe separate, but they didn't tell the kids yet. And they go to a nice <laughs> resort, and they end up on this, like, little secluded beach uh, with a bunch of other random people, uh, a few couples, family, whatever. And immediately somebody dies, and then after that, everything just goes really fast and you know they're aging people are dying uh they're trying to figure out how to get off of this beach there were moments where i was uncomfortable and i was scared and i feel like it does have a lot to say about like time and aging and things going really fast m night Shyamalan said he was kind of inspired by like his dad dealing with dementia and like i could see what he was doing but just as a whole (laughs) i'm like i shouldn't be laughing you know, because like, it's right, not, it's, it's supposed funny. to be scary. Yeah, if it's like not supposed to be funny in that moment. Um, God, I can't, I'm not going to say because it would spoil something, but there's just like one line too that I keep repeating back and forth to my mom as like an 
I joke. <laughs> it's like a serious thing, but <laughs> the way that the character like talks about it is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I would say to check it out though, just because it was kind of fun. Um, and also I have thought about it several times. Like I am thinking about it, uh, like questions that it raised. Like, I don't think that sometimes if a movie, you wouldn't say it's a good movie. It doesn't mean it can't give you something, you know, like Mm -hmm. we've talked about watching maybe a show or movie that's like not great, you know, but it doesn't mean that you can't get something or like have a nice discussion about it. Um, Yeah. But it just sometimes uh i'm just like this is not how people talk to each other (laughs) (laughs) i always find that really hard because i am a stickler for dialogue and i try in my own writing to make dialogue as authentic as possible without being awkward and weird like real life speaking (laughs) because real life speaking is awkward and weird sometimes and you don't actually want to capture that but you want to capture the portion that feels authentic so i will like i am i'll be the first one to call out a line of dialogue that doesn't work and rewrite it like i will rewrite it on the fly we're being like why did they even have that word in there they could have taken out this word and it would have completely changed the dialogue uh to make it better so I really, I do have a problem with bad dialogue. And I, even in a good movie, I will call out a bad line. <laughs> I can't help myself. No, as you should. And so there, there were a lot of times when like I looked at my mom and I'm like, this is so weird. Like, you think, like we would just look at each other like, why are they talking to each other that way? Or like, why did they express it that way? <laughs> Things that were just very unintentionally funny or even like scenes that kept going that like should have been ended and like people were still talking and like making comments until it just was like, I'm like, okay, like why are we still here in this this scene? Yeah. I always, yeah, that, that is another thing too. If a scene goes on even for like 10 seconds too long, I'd be like, why didn't you just cut it? (laughs) Yeah. It's why didn't you cut it? It's the characters saying things that like we should implicitly know from what we've seen. And it's just that Uh, it's like trying to help the audience too much. I hate that. Yeah, it's like, oh, there's just one scene where they're like, okay, maybe this guy's like, we could swim off of the beach. And he's like, looking all the, he's like, does anybody want to try? Like, who's a good swimmer? And they all just like stare at him forever and then just slowly start walking away from him. They don't even answer him, right? He's like trying to come up with a solution. <laughs> and then what it's just like, it's too far, you know, like that kind of thing where I'm like, yes, we know. Like, that's <laughs> the point. Like, it's, it's just, just random things or like character connections that, don't mean anything to us you know because like we don't know them um i appreciated the chaotic quality to it in terms of reflecting time you know and how things go so fast and they're out of your control and and whatever but the execution was uh was lagging but if you want to just throw something on and uh you know have a laugh or actually you know probe some stuff that you're thinking about with like aging and you know, maybe you're just like slightly horrified by how fast everything is going. Uh, it'll probably just make it worse for you. But <laughs> like, I did have a weird kind of anxiety after watching it. Um, because it did make me think about those things. But, uh, you know, it's also probably what you thought it was going to be from watching the trailer. Mm. Like the feeling you had, and probably the hesitation, <laughs> and the kind of like, mm, that's basically what you're going to get. Uh, but I think you could you can take something away from it. And some of the acting is still good. I would say Alex Wolf to me really did um, a great job. Also, it's like trying to act like a six-year-old basically the whole time that has physically, <laughs> but is uh-huh. still a child, which can be laughable. Um, and sometimes I was a little like, eh. but he, I think he did a great job mm. for like what it was. Yeah, that is that a tricky it. thing to do. I've only seen probably two people pull it off. And I, the one I can mention is um, Florence Pugh and Little Women, actually, surprisingly enough, and even Eliza Scanlon and yeah. Little Women. Uh, but she's quiet. Her character is quieter uh, in Little Women, uh, Eliza Scanlon. So she doesn't really have to act young for too long before they are like they're more equal ages that they actually are. But Florence Pugh, I thought, 
pulled off the character of Amy being young really well and you bought it and you weren't like, wait, this this girl looks like she's, you know, at least 17. Uh, so yeah. that is a, yeah, I think that's a tricky thing to pull off. And like they try to give them haircuts sometimes to look younger or something like that. And it never yeah. <laughs> goes well a lot of the time. But I, I don't know. I don't think I'm watching this movie, even though like... <laughs> <laughs> you told me what I expected about it, actually. And, like, the the things I've heard, it's all what I expected from the trailer, actually, like you were saying. Yeah. Uh, I just recently saw Men in Theaters. And Men is Alex Garland's uh, third installment. He did um, Ex Machina and Annihilation. I'm a huge fan of those two movies. Annihilation is probably in my top ten movies. Um, but it was a straight horror movie and there was no sci-fi in it, like Annihilation and Ex Machina were more sci-fi with aspects of horror and men is just straight horror. And, uh, I understand, like, I, I think it's probably better than old, <laughs> just execution wise, <laughs> even though I haven't seen old, I think it probably is visually and execution wise and theme thematically. Uh, but I will say that. I understood all the concepts and, and the themes. Mostly men was trying to get across to me. But I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> like, I don't I don't want to see the horror, the body gore again. Uh, I, I thought it was all well done. It's just not a story I'm going to come back to. Uh, and I feel like old is going to be like that, but not good. And I don't want to, I don't want to just like, I don't want to, I don't need extra images in my head that make me scared and uncomfortable and give me anxiety uh, for a bad movie <laughs> or like a subpar <laughs> movie, if that makes sense. If Or I mean, that might sound yeah. really mean, but it's like, well, at least with Alex Garland's, like it was so visually impactful uh, that I'm okay with those really bad unsettling images stuck in my head like i think it was worth the watch for me whereas old i just like my prediction is the images that will be stuck with me aren't going to be worth the images that are going to be stuck in my head <laughs> things get really stuck in my head like i walk out of the bathroom at night every night and there's whoever's the newest scary thing from whatever horror movie I just watched or show I just watched is in the corner every time I come out of the bathroom and I have to like <laughs> put my head down and like just get back to bed it's just there's nothing here the dog would know <laughs> so I can't I can't just willy-nilly risk more images that I don't want in my head for without the value <laughs> no yeah it's not uh it's not worth it also yeah <laughs> it's not worth it you don't need to you don't need to see this movie. Oh, but I will also say that there's, uh, I don't, I don't think there's images in it that would be Haunt that you. horrifying. Yeah, but maybe just um, ideas or, or things that happen. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I, I guess Annihilation is probably a good example of like that's worth it to me. But I always think of uh, the bear. That's all I'll say. Oh, got the vi the bear talking in the human voice. Yeah. yeah. And that like that's gargled that human voice. So, yeah, it was awful, but that movie is so good. I think it would also be in my top ten. That's a great movie. I think Annihilation doesn't scare me though, because the themes are so well rounded in it. Like you understand exactly what all these images are telling you. I think when you don't fully understand what an image is telling you, it scares you more. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. The unknown. Yeah. Yeah, like no. Thing, yeah, like things that you're not really sure what they are and they're just kind of like I mean, yes, in all horror like most of the scary things are symbolizing something, but there's things that are like just purposefully really scary looking. <laughs> and yeah. I don't think annihilation is doing that. I think it the things that are unnatural, they're not trying to scare you. They're just trying to look unnatural. Am I making any sense here? Sometimes I get like way too involved in the thought processes in my head and I can't, like I shouldn't be speaking them as I'm verbalizing them. <laughs> this is why I write and I don't, <laughs> and I'm not like a stage speaker. <laughs> you're making, you're making sense to me, but okay. <laughs> I've had years to 
translate translate the <laughs> the stream of consciousness the language yeah <laughs> but anyway hopefully that makes sense to the listeners what i'm trying to say but i don't know yeah i guess yeah if nicole thought it was entertaining and the concept is worth it then give, check it out i don't it might be a while for me to check it out because I actually have to watch a horror movie that I hear is incredibly good with Rebecca Hall, uh, and that's The Night House. I still haven't seen The Night House, and I heard it was incredible. I know. I know. I wanted to watch that one, and then she also, I don't remember what it's called. There's a trailer popping up for another. Looks like a horror movie that she's going to be in, and it mm, seems yeah, like... It's vaguely familiar. Yeah. I feel like that maybe is how she's kind of like pivoting her career which i find interesting but i will also say about her that like i've never watched a bad movie with her in it mm. um i feel like she just i don't know i guess she just is picking very well <laughs> she's an underrated actor actually and most yeah. people probably don't know the name rebecca hall um and probably they know her from if they are gonna know her face from anything it's gonna be iron man uh but <laughs> she's uh, yeah. the scientist um at the beginning that Tony is with before he even becomes Iron Man that he hooks up with. <laughs> but I think that's like the only mainstream thing that people would I, know her from. The gift that Jason Bateman oh, would be. Yeah, um, but even that's a little kind of niche. It is, but that's a really good movie. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy it. I mean, she's a great writer and director as well because she just did Passing as her directorial debut this past year in 2021. And Passing with Ruth Nega and Tessa Thompson, directed by Rebecca Hall, is incredible. And I remember being like, when, it, when I saw you know the trailer for it and I'm really interested in watching it, I, I'm like, Rebecca Hall? Like, Rebecca Hall the actor Rebecca Hall. So I immediately had to look it up and like, they don't let you have the same name in uh, like the guild, the actors guild or the Hollywood guild or whatever. So I, it had to be her, but I just, it, you know, it just was like a no way sort of thing. Uh, and I look it up and I'm like, Oh crap. Yeah. She wrote and directed passing and it's amazing. Uh, it's kind of like um, Maggie Gyllenhaal with her di directorial debut at the lost daughter uh, this past year too. Like just two good actresses that have turned to directing and writing and they're really good at it. Like they probably should have been doing this a lot sooner. They just, no one was yeah. letting them do it. <laughs> it's funny too, because it's both adaptations. Yeah. Of not so I guess, yeah, nobody let them do it <laughs> all the time. I'm like, what material would we have gotten if uh, you'd been doing this for a while? Yeah, you know? Can you like, imagine? I, yeah. But, like, as they go on, like, what other things they're going to write and direct? Yeah, I'm Women. looking forward to them. Women, they're good directors. You just have to let they're them good. do it. <laughs> let women do things. <laughs> <laughs> they can make really great stuff. Um, but, yeah, I think I think old will be... Uh, if I'm really bored one day and I've gone through my entire list of films I have yet to watch. But The Night House is... Uh, I keep saying I need to watch it. It's just like, I have to be in the right mindset for horror because it really does affect me. And I enjoy it. Like in my later years, I appreciate it. In my earlier years, I avoided it because <laughs> I did it. I was like, no, thank you. I don't want to be scared. And then I realized that there is such thing as good horror and it covers a lot of great themes. Uh, so now I will watch them. I do have to be in the right mental state. And the night house, I'm just not ready for. I haven't been ready for in the past few months. And it's just been sitting there on my list since I got the recommendation like six months ago. And I feel bad, yeah. but I just can't sit down. Like every time I go to watch it, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> it's been on my list too, but, yeah, but from the trailers, I'm like, this looks great, but it does look like psychological too and I, I know like from I'm like I'm really gonna like this but it, yeah it probably is gonna fuck me up a little <laughs> it's probably gonna like disturb me on a certain level or yeah like we we think about things a lot you and I so you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah we can't just especially if it's impactful it's hard for me to put put it down and just go to sleep and then I'll just keep racing in my head for the next week like me, I watched men two weeks ago now week and a half ago now i can't stop thinking about it 
So, and I do, like, I do that with movies, you know, I'll think about them for a really long time, but especially things that I have to decipher or decide what their imagery means. And I feel like that's a lot of horror is like deciding what visually they're telling you. So it's hard for me, like you said, to get it out of our heads. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess some people are able to. <laughs> some people are horror that? junkies and I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I, no, I don't either. I'm definitely, I like you, I'm getting into horror as I get older more and reading it too. Um, but I'm not like those people that horror constantly and they just flip it off and they're like, all right, you know, (laughs) just enjoy it, you know, without like letting it creep under, (laughs) get into their consciousness. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not me. Okay. So the main event, a little bit of horror, but not really in Russian doll. I mean, there's like a slight bit of it at times. Yeah, uh, depending on what you, how you think of horror, um, but uh, let's get into season two of Russian Doll. This uh, is a series produced by uh, Leslie Headland, who I actually, as Nicole informed me just before we started the show, I really enjoy her writing uh, and other things that she's produced. I know the big thing is that for me is Bachelorette a little indie film that she made with Kirsten Dunst and Isla Fisher and uh, Rebel Wilson and uh, Lizzie Kaplan. I mean, this the the formula for this movie is just something that like Ashley is going to like. Like my, I, This is way up my alley. Uh, but I think that she did a fantastic job with Bachelorette writing it and producing it. Uh, it's a great film, great little film. I believe it's still on Netflix, actually. But don't don't uh, don't quote me on it. And you should definitely check that out. Uh, also, Amy Poehler is a producer. I love that Amy Poehler is producing these uh, women-run projects. She did. Uh, she recently even produced Moxie, which was a really great film, a uh, coming-of-age story um, about a teenage girl and kind of adopting feminism and seeing what was wrong uh, with her school and how her peers were kind of anti-feminist and how she wanted to be powerful. And it was actually a very enjoyable movie. Like I, if you're, we don't make a lot of like teen rom-coms anymore. I mean, I guess there's like two, all the boys I loved before and the kissing booth and like that. I would say this is on a much better scale than those. (laughs) Like this is, this movie was actually much better than those sorts of things. Uh, but I don't know. I just haven't felt like I haven't watched like an impactful teen movie in a while. Uh, and Moxie was definitely that. So I would, and that's on Netflix too. And then I would definitely encourage you guys, if you're looking for that, to go see it. It's good. Uh, which that uh, was just a little, I don't know. That just is a little tangent I went on because I was thinking of Amy Poehler producing things and she's produced a lot of great stuff lately. Anyway. And Natasha Leone, who is starring in Russian Doll. So uh, these three ladies I really have uh, a lot of love for. (laughs) And season one was incredibly enjoyable. Like probably one of the highlight shows of the last five years. So, I mean, if you're listening to this spoiler discussion of season two, (laughs) I'm assuming you saw season one. Um... And uh, I, I, when we heard that season two was coming out, we were excited. I did question, well, what, what the hell are they going to do with it? I really thought this was just a nice little limited series, its own thing. Uh, and, I mean, they did create a new story, create something new, told more about the character. And it's got its flaws. It goes off the rails. Uh, all in all, it's enjoyable uh, as a whole. Yeah, I would agree. I think it. <clears throat> we talked previous a little bit about how like season one is kind of that perfect thing because it is a time loop as well. <laughs> so we keep doing it over and over again, and it did just seem like, oh, this is excellent. Um, the idea and the execution and the visuals and the acting, like everything, was perfect. Uh, I definitely did 
enjoy this. I was thinking that, yeah, where is it going to go? But I feel like they obviously wanted to explore generational trauma and stuff that we saw in season one, but wasn't really fully unpacked. You know, like we know that she had a hard time with her mother and dealing with mental illness and all these things and how they affect her and like why she might be in the time loop and, you know, how she views death. And, you know, then obviously with Alan too, like they're both going through stuff. They have to help each other out. Uh, so I appreciated though that, it wasn't like that was just abandoned. It's like, okay, now we have a season two, like let's deal with that. And Natasha Leone said that like season one was like, how do we stop dying? And then season two is like, well, how do we live? Mm. You know, how is she supposed to move forward now uh, with her past that she's obviously, as many people do, you're constantly thinking about. um, And this idea of like the Coney Island that kept coming up. (laughs) I I like that. Yeah. That reference if this had happened or if this hadn't happened, then everything would be different. And I felt like in that regard, there were like a couple of themes that even if sometimes episode to episode, like you said, going off the rails, I was a little bit like, I don't know why we're doing this or this is, we're kind of going off. You know, I don't know if there's a point to this, like the themes were still solidly there. So I was still constantly thinking about, okay, well this is happening or she's doing this because she's just trying to figure out any way that she can make, her past better so that she can be like her best self. Like she can't let go of this idea that like, you know, maybe if I go back and like make my mom a better mom, or maybe if I go back and I get the gold, then have the money and change our family. Yeah. And our luck and just like everything that she views as like the problems of like why she's not her best self, you know, (laughs) like I can go back and change it. Um, And then, you know, as the season kind of draws to a close too, like the show forces her to kind of reckon with that thing of like, everybody wants to do that. And, you know, like everybody, (laughs) like if you're presented with the opportunity that you want to go back and make things better the way that they should have been, but like you can't. And like, if you have it, then you shouldn't, you know, like her talking to Alan, Alan being like, I was a good commuter. I followed the rules of the (laughs) train. The time, the time travel (laughs) commute. do whatever you want and like don't you think that like there's stuff I wanted to do but I didn't and obviously then time starts like there's consequences of like just doing whatever you want with the time travel uh when it's presented to you so even though it wasn't as smooth as the first season uh it was definitely a little bit more of like controlled chaos Uh, Mm. I still enjoyed it and I really feel like emotionally for me it was more impactful than season one um, even though obviously they delved into like dark stuff in season one, um, even just Alan's storyline and dealing with suicidal ideation and, you know, mm-hmm. mental illness, and, like, order and all these like little routines that he has. Um, but I felt like there was something about going back, um, seeing her mom and her grandmother being in their bodies, you know, seeing her mom as a little girl, seeing herself as a baby. There was a lot of stuff that I was like, oh, this is like this is rich. This is emotionally rich. I'm like, this is like really unpacking like psychologically, like why we are the way that we are and like how you view yourself. Um, so for that alone, I would say that it was like a, a successful season. Um, but yeah. what, what do you think? <laughs> um, I don't agree. I agree with all, all the things that you're saying. Uh, I, I mean, yes, in that regard, it works emotionally. It's telling us more about the character. It's developing the characters. Well, I'm just going to say character. Cause I'll be honest. I think Alan, uh, his character fell off the wayside and, uh, they remembered in episode six that they had to come back to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think that the, uh, the plot and the pacing, got off track uh i I would definitely say from there is a huge leap from episode five to episode six to get us to the finish line so i think that's my biggest problem uh with it i it seemed almost that the time loop thing was not gonna come back up that it had nothing to do with like this second season felt like 
it hadn't it was never going to come back around to the season one thing uh based on the trajectory of episodes one through five uh and then episode six and seven hit and you're like oh wait a minute oh we're back in the first season oh i should have rewatched the first season <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i thought that the pacing there was a a major pacing problem and i think that problem had to do with where they went with the plot. Though I liked where they went with the plot, I thought it was cool that she goes all the way back to, is it even her grandmother or her great-grandmother? I think it's even the, the their great-grandmother. Or maybe it could just be all the way back to her grandmother back in, uh, yeah, in Hungary. Um, yeah, she, she just looks different grandma. because they have an older actress play her when she's in america right yeah so then when she goes so back, yeah that's what tripped me up <laughs> us body yeah so that's her young grandmother and then she finds out yeah that her great-grandmother is already dead has been taken away all right um but so i really enjoyed that the aspect of her going all the way back to budapest to hungry, to leaving the map for herself, to finding the the silver or the whatever in uh, valuables that her family had, hiding it in the wall, leaving the map for her grandma. Like I, I appreciated that she went through all these steps just to be back at square one, and it didn't matter anyway. And they were going to get those coins, yeah. and the coins were going to go under the couch, and it didn't fucking matter. And I appreciated that even though she went back in time several times and she tried to figure it all out and she tried to change it. It didn't matter. And like, there's always like, Oh, don't go back in time because if you change anything, you're going to change everything. And I actually liked that they flipped that like time traveling uh, stereotype on its head. And we're like, no, if you can go back and you can do all these, all this different shit and it's not going to matter. Time actually does stay the same. And I kind of, I really appreciated that it doesn't matter what you do and what you change. Time is going to play out the way it's going to play out. Uh, so I did appreciate that aspect of it. I just thought we took a really far like path to get to that <laughs> point. And then, then we, so we took a path like all the way to the left and then episode six comes around. And they're like, oh, no, we're going all the way to the right now. Like, just yeah, clear yeah. across back to the time loop. Um, I know it's because she fucked up time. And I really liked that. And I really loved it. I think, actually, episode six and seven are the strongest episodes. Uh, yeah. But we were, we were just going in real two different directions. And I don't really think that they merged well. They did not merge seamlessly. Uh even though I, lo I really loved like the bringing back the time loop and how insane time went when she brought her baby self back. Um, and Alan's like, you gotta, you gotta bring this baby back because look at all the <laughs> shit that's going on. This is insanity. And I really appreciated the humor because we had the humor of the first season was really back in full swing because this season wasn't very humorous, uh, whereas the first season was. And that's not a problem. It's just I really appreciated getting the humor back that we had from season one. Uh, so how do you fix that? How would I fix that? I don't know, though. I don't know how I would fix the problem of telling the whole family's history and getting us back on track. Maybe I wouldn't focus five episodes on that and I would try to condense it to three. Yeah, I think that's the only thing, because I feel like, you know, when I'm watching something and I, I'm kind of like, I don't know about how you guys executed this. I'm like, well, what the, what would you do, idiot? You know? <laughs> yeah, like, like, how would you handle it? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. But then I'm like, that's why I didn't create the show. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not able to do it. But with this, I was struggling. And I think you're right. Like, it just went on a little too long. Or there were certain things that were fun but I don't know if they had a purpose you know it's like okay that I guess his name was Kristoff and like he's funny 
you know the the guy the german guy <laughs> with the the her. greta i mean the greta lee yeah. like her going to budapest with greta lee's character i mean i love greta lee so much she plays, yeah. plays this character so well <laughs> and it's so much fun uh, yeah that episode was a ton of fun um but it was yeah it was why like again it's like but why <laughs> Yeah, but what? Like, it's fun, and like, then she goes on the drug trip, and I get it. Like, that's nice too. You get to show off, like, in terms of like the visuals. Then, and there's a lot of things that are foreshadowing, and like, again, that's fun, and it's cool. But I was like, I would have rather that time be spent. Maybe you mentioning Alan. Like, I don't know if I wanted each episode to be perfectly split between the two of them because I get that season one is both their story. I definitely think that dividing it between the two of them was much better in first season but it still kind of does feel like Nadia's story you know like she really is the main main character but with this season it was just like like you said like it was so weird it was like all of a sudden they would just shove Alan in <laughs> um and I do think there's so much that was unexplored with his storyline and his connection to his grandmother um that came in in the last two episodes, which is probably why too, like they did feel like the best episodes, um, the him finally having that conversation with her. And I love the twit that she's the MTA worker that mm. we've seen a couple of times. <laughs> uh, it's really sweet. Like that connection. Um, but then having that conversation was so great, but I was just like, uh, okay, how do we get here? <laughs> yeah. Like I wanted more of this. I wanted more of Alan trying to figure out like what's next for him too. Cause he's basically, saying to her and kind of admitting like I went through this thing you know and like we've been changed and like we should have learned stuff but I'm still not I'm not living you know like I'm still afraid all the time and like also just emotionally the impact I guess it's supposed to be four years later and like he's like how do I live with like knowing that I killed myself you know like most people are not in that scenario or people that attempt something like that and like that kind of mindset of them like okay but now you got a second chance and you're living, you know? And it seems like in that moment, he's really struggling um, and he's very emotional about it. Like, this is really hard. Like, I don't know how to live my life. Like, I don't know how to not know everything that's going to happen or if I'm making the perfect choice um, and to just be like, okay, just live, you know? Like, and I thought that was really great conversation and like interesting material, but it was just all of a sudden shoved in at the end. And I feel like maybe showing more of him living in the grandmother's body and like having his own thing like Nadia was doing would have been helpful to explore his character further. Cause I think he's a great character. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that Charlie Barnett, I love the way that he plays him. Um, it's very relatable and endearing. And he always just makes me feel like, Oh, <laughs> you know, like I, think he yeah. does a great job. I was missing him. So in that regard, I guess I would say like, I think the one through five, it was a little bit more grating on me because I was like, this is time that you could be spending on stuff that I do want to see. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're making it very well. Um, so that, yeah, then six and seven though were very satisfying, but I'm like, okay, but like, yeah, I mean, it takes, late. yeah. And it took away the emotional resonance of that whole scene because we didn't have enough of Alan. Yeah. And then I do feel like, Nadia's character development is kind of still a little stagnant. I mean, like, she does come to an epiphany in the last episode where she looks around and she goes, oh, no, I wouldn't change anything. Look at me and, you know, who I am in the corner reading the book. And she sees her young self and she wouldn't change. Like, yeah, no, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change how my mother was. I wouldn't change basically being raised by Ruth. And like, no, she wouldn't change anything. But Nadia doesn't get there until, like, and I thought she had the epiphany once she realized she couldn't change time in episode five. I think it was, like, yeah. where she does, the, oh, yeah, so episode five ends with her shoving the coins under the couch, and she realizes she can't change anything, and so she starts dancing with her her mother as a child. Uh, and I was like, oh, great, good, we had an epiphany. There's a breakthrough. And then... It shifts way too quickly because I feel like Nadia did have a breakthrough, but then she goes right into stealing her baby self and going, yeah. uh, 
to the future with her baby self. And it kind of like negates the understanding she just had. So I, I almost think it was like, maybe they should have made a choice. Either they make the choice that she's like, great, I'm hiding these coins on the couch again. Oh, wow, well, this sucks. And it's like, this is going to look the same way. I and mean, we try to get her to do something else, like hide the coin somewhere else or like still try to evade the inevitable. And then that would make sense with her taking her baby self back. Like, I just thought that she already had that realization that she can't change things. But then she goes and takes the baby. So I was like, wait a minute. I thought we already, we already learned this lesson, Nadia. Why are we still doing this? So I guess that was a little hard for me to reconcile with like the character's trajectory. Yeah. Now it's like now that you're saying that, I don't think when it was happening, I was able to pinpoint why that was bothersome. <laughs> but you're right because it does feel sort of definitive, especially after we've watched like five whole episodes of her trying to do this and realizing like, yeah, like I can't do it. And that episode ending with her cycling through the train and repeatedly like you know, like she's now, then she's with her mom in the eighties, then it's Vera, then it's young Vera. And she's realizing like time is a flat circle, whatever. <laughs> like I'm going through, I'm cycling over and over again. And so finally she lands in the eighties and she's like giving birth. But like, yeah, to make that decision to be like, I'm going to give you the mom that you deserve, which is me. I'm going to raise <laughs> me. <laughs> which is so delusional, but like, I'm on board with it that she would do that. But I agree with you, not after the five episodes that we've seen and her seeming to come to that kind of like acceptance. Um, I guess if they hadn't made that moment feel so like, Oh, she understands now, you know, like she, she can't change anything. Um, you know, she's, it's so crazy that she takes the baby self and then that makes time collapse. And then Alan pointing out like, this is not good. And like, could you just try to prove to me that you're not like the most selfish person? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to leave everything this way um and i don't have a problem with that she would do something that seems that selfish or just like yeah no, no that seems yeah that seems in her character i just don't know it if does. it works after she already came to like she already understood it seemed like she already understood that she can't change time yeah so i that's where i have a hiccup i think i think they wanted two things like, I like both scenes, you know, I like both, I like time collapsing in on itself. And I love the two, the, you know, the chaos that ensues in the next two episodes to finish up the season. But I don't know if you can have both scenes. It's almost like they, they, like they knew that all of, like both of these things were great. Like the, the scene with her realizing the coins are never, you know, going to be hers. And then the final uh, time on the subway train with her her mother and um Ruth and the grandma and that was really nice and it was almost like they they wanted both scenes even though both scenes don't make sense to have in the same plot line no they don't even though they're both yeah. really nice scenes yeah it's almost like you had to choose one or the other or like for me. Your... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kill your darlings. Exactly. Like for the sake of the story, pick which one you want to go with. Do you want the conclusion to be the baby subway thing and time collapsing in on itself and bringing it all the way back to the first season? Or do you want to just end it on you can't change time and just leave it at the end of episode five and maybe have an episode six that kind of wraps up Alan's story? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm a fan of where it all did end up, you know, like that time collapses and she realizes, too, that I, I appreciated that also, like, there's a has to be a consequence for her doing this repeatedly, you know, mm. that she's not learned her lesson. Like, I, it's hard, but I was a fan of the fact that they don't make it easy and she doesn't make it uh, to say goodbye to Ruth. Um, mm -hmm. and then like the wake too, but that it's like, okay, like trying to fix your mom, like you didn't get to say goodbye to the mom that you had, you know, she realizes at the end, like this whole time, like I haven't been there for Ruth who actually raised me cause I was trying to fix 
my mom, but she wasn't really my mom in that way. Ruth was, um, mm-hmm. I liked that the only way that she gets that is like talking to young Ruth. Um, the Annie Murphy is young Ruth was so She's incredible. I mean, Oh, I just want to mention that Annie Murphy is a very good actor because coming off of Schitt's Creek as uh, Alexis is, it's just like, she plays so entirely a different person. That's impressive. Like Annie Murphy is an impressive actor. I don't know how you go from playing that character in Schitt's Creek to playing this character, Ruth. They're completely different. Yeah. She and she really puts on a different persona, different voice, different persona. Like, I am looking forward to seeing Annie Murphy and more things. I hope she gets more roles. Yeah, I am too. She, it, mo- I'm sure people obviously know her from Schitt's Creek, and like that is like such a specific <laughs> character and such a specific, just like the way that she talks. Um, that it was jarring in a good way to see her like this. And I felt like it's also hard to embody a character that like we saw throughout season one um, and this season two. And like Elizabeth Ashley as like the regular older Ruth is so perfect. Uh, Just her voice, man, (laughs) like everything about her is just like amazing. So I would think it would be daunting to try and play like the younger version of that character that we know and we love. Um, But she did. It was amazing. It was perfect. Like immediately, I feel like as soon as you see her on screen as young Ruth, you're like, oh, it's Ruth. You know, (laughs) just the way that she deals with Nadia in Nora's body um, and that friendship of like standing up for her constantly and being there for Nora and then being there for her daughter um, was very moving. It was really sweet. And just like the show, I guess actually they all, it's a lot of that female friendship of like, Vera has Delia and Nora has Ruth and then obviously Nadia, Nadia has Lizzie and uh and Maxine which is Greta Lee you know so like <laughs> oh Maxine oh Greta Lee Ma- does such yeah, an incredible I- job with this character I can't she does because like I don't know how she the way that she delivers the like every choice that she makes it's like for maximum impact <laughs> 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 it's so effortless. It's so funny. It's so like almost like a Phoebe Buffet kind of character of saying ridiculous things that like if someone else was saying it, I feel like it would just be like, this isn't real. This isn't a real person or whatever. But she just does it so effortlessly. It's like so charming and so funny. Um, and they just slip in like a ridiculous. Like, <laughs> like she'll just say something. And I'm like, what? But also she's not like a ridiculous character like you feel that connection with Nadia um and that she's there and she's like solid like there like she's like okay I have you you know like I'm your friend I'm always gonna show up for you um but I am a weirdo (laughs) (laughs) it's so funny that you make that comparison to to Phoebe Buffet or Phoebe and Friends uh because I actually wanted to comment on the there's a the subway scene where Nadia is kind of losing it and they're all sitting on the subway going to Ruth's funeral. Uh, and Lizzie is the one who's talking, right? But if you catch Greta Lee over in the corner, she's actually making incredibly like react- reactionary facial expressions. And that's what I've always thought that's so incredible about Lisa Kudrow is the woman can be acting her ass off in a scene that she's not speaking in and the camera's not focused on her. And if you ever watch Friends, Lisa Kudrow is just always on. She's so on all the time. And she'll be making facial expressions that are hilarious, that are even funnier than what the the character who's speaking is saying. And that's what it reminded me of with Lisa Kuda, with uh, Greta Lee in this scene and some of the scenes, but especially the subway scene, because I'm like, Lizzie is speaking right now, but I am paying attention to Greta Lee. (laughs) Like, I am paying attention to Maxine. I am not paying attention to the other character. And like, that's, that's what I'll say is like, that's how good. Greta Lee is. Yeah, no, she's she's amazing. She does pull the attention, but in it, she's just like completely magnetic. Uh, and I, you know, I felt like those moments too of humor from her were needed. Uh, yes, like heavier stuff throughout the season. So yeah, like 
I don't know if it's necessary for them to go to Budapest. <laughs> it was <laughs> an like, like, awesome episode. It was an awesome, yeah, and it was fun, you know. So like, we got it, and they made it as entertaining as possible. Um, but I mean, I guess that's where. Do you add episodes then to to keep it all? Because this was seven episodes. Do you add three episodes so that you can finish Alan's storyline and you can not rush your last two episodes and you can make the transition from Nadia accepting her family's uh, future to her stealing the baby still? Do you, Do you add more episodes then to make everything more seamless? Like maybe... You did need 10 episodes. Because then you could have a tangent episode that doesn't mean anything. Like, because TV shows used to do this all the time, right? Because they used to be 22 episode seasons. So you'd have standalone episodes and they didn't connect that much to the larger season, but it gave you something that you needed from the character. It gave you character development most of the time. And it was fun. So, like, maybe there's something to be said about we don't really need shows to be so short. Like, maybe our attention spans have gotten too short. (laughs) It might be. I mean, season one was eight episodes. So, this was one episode shorter than that. And I would say, that yeah, like, maybe this season needed more. Well, they were trying to tackle more. Yeah, they were trying to tackle more. So, really should have had more episodes than that. I also don't know if, like... COVID or like whatever was going on kind of impacted that um, and the length of it. But, you know, that's here nor there Uh, (laughs) in a perfect world if we could have. Yeah, I guess I would say that we needed more episodes and that with those more episodes, I would have liked to have been a split a little bit more evenly between her and Alan. Uh, Because I think even if you added episodes, that's still a problem. Like when we pivot to Alan or yeah, like sometimes he would be there in an episode a little bit, but like we'd be with Nadia and then all of a sudden it would be Alan. And I was like, but why are you doing it now? Mm-hmm. You know, like I was- there was no connection between the two plot lines. Like they don't, they're separate and they would interlink just briefly because they're both like, is this happening to you? Yeah. Um, but their, their storylines weren't really connected. They were running parallel, but, there was like a th- there's a thread missing somewhere. Yeah, there was. I mean, especially in just like I guess the connection that they could have been showing was just like how they're both dealing with this opportunity and Alan wanting to just live it. You know, like they're I think they're like playing chess, and he says basically like, "No, don't like." Have you ever seen a movie about time <laughs> travel? Like, like, don't do anything, and like this is just a gift. Like, please don't mess this up for us. Like, he just enjoys being able to see what his grandmother like learning about his past yeah yeah and she's very much hell-bent on like no like we're given this chance to change it and he's like no so i would have liked for it to be split more evenly and to see like him trying to fight against that urge to change it because we see that like he's like yeah i'm not going to change anything and i'm the good commuter but like he does have that moment of like trying to find i don't remember his name is luca maybe or lucas um and he's just like not able to like he just gets stopped very easily and then he kind of just like gives up i guess and then he ends up in nadia's timeline so that felt a rushed you know and and that felt like i i a little bit um i didn't trust the show as much this season when i was watching mm. it like i i didn't trust that it knew exactly where it was leading us or i thought that maybe it would make a misstep um and there were times like that where i was like i don't know if you understand yourself the connection between Alan and Nadia this season and like mm-hmm. what, what you're trying to say, you know, it really did feel like sometimes they'd be like, and what about Alan? i <laughs> like, I don't think you know what to do with Alan this mm. season. Uh, it, was a, it was a little disappointing on that front. Yeah. Strange, so, yeah. Yeah. That was probably the biggest flaw in the show was Alan's plot line feeling like a really big side note (laughs) sidebar it just felt like a sidebar and not a part of the story uh except for when he had to help nadia (laughs) yeah once they were together it was fine i mean they're great together they're hilarious together i mean those two episodes were just so good uh 
Mm, I just think that I wanted a um, more of the season like that though. And that was that's the bigger yeah. problem. Uh I really loved the going to the morgue and she sees all her dead selves. <laughs> Uh, yeah. She sees the dead Alan, and I was like, wow, that's really great imagery. That's really cool. I like this. But then I also, there's parts of me that, like, d- are you, you're relying so heavily on your viewer being familiar with season one, like having a perfect memory of season one. Because it was four years ago, and unless you rewatch season one, I feel like you're probably missing some things. Like, I remembered enough of it to be like, oh, this is season, they're going back to what was going on in season one. At the same time, it was, I I think it, to do it in the last two episodes is like, you're relying really heavily on your, your viewer having just watched season one. Yeah, I I feel like people that maybe just decided to give the show a shot now and watching one right into two would probably be a much better experience. Uh, mm. Because even just stuff with her mom and the way she grew up, I didn't necessarily remember everything that had happened and like Ruth's guilt about that and stuff that they would reference. And I watched the recap that Netflix gives you. I don't think the recap um, is a good recap. <laughs> I don't think it's enough. Like, it kind of just reminds you of like, oh, yeah, she was in time loop. I'm like, I know. You know, <laughs> like, this was when they realized why they were both going through it and like, whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, stuff that definitely comes up throughout. And then, like you said, at the end, um, I did feel a little bit lost with that. But I do like how cruel that twist is of like, they finally get out of the time loop. And now because of what she's done, it's like, oh, you didn't learn anything. <laughs> 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 yeah. In fact, at the start of the season, they're like, "Oh, we're doing good, and we got out of it, and we're helping each other." And it's just like, "No, no, <laughs> you messed up." Now you obviously like didn't learn anything, and it was those moments too of like horror, like Alan being like, "What if we can't get out of this? Now? <laughs> what if we just completely broke into like, like, what are we supposed to do?" Um, which really did feel horrific. I feel like added that kind of like gravity to those last two episodes was just maybe another part of why they were so enjoyable because I really felt like they were finally dealing with like time travel is not all fun and games. Yeah, like, and, I like, <laughs> movies. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love the, the Nadia opening the bathroom a few times and like different things come up and then it goes back to the old Jewish school that the apartment building used to be <laughs> and then the Nadia is just like go with it just go with it like they this character is so consistent in her personality and they like when she, she's sitting at the counter with Maxine and Lizzie and uh it's just hilarious. And Alan's like, do you think this is working? Like, look, look at look behind you. And she's like, everybody's having a great time. I don't know what the problem is. And he's like, does this look normal? <laughs> oh, yeah, my God. Greta Lee is like, who brought these little kids to my party? <laughs> it was brilliant. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not until like Ruth, the Ruth of it all. And she yeah. like sees her constantly coming up the stairs and she's like, I messed up. <laughs> she's funny, but like, maybe you're right. Like, maybe I messed up. Like, but she's just like, he has to drag her into like kicking and screaming. Like, I love him just physically picking her up. And <laughs> she's like, I know how to walk. <laughs> he's like, no, like, clearly you need somebody. Um, and that too, like, it didn't come through again until I guess the last two episodes. But like, that's what's nice about the dynamic too. It just feels like the universe understood from season one like these two people in some ways need each other and without the time blue like they're never and they cross paths but like they were never actually going to be friends or be in each other's lives until they're forced into it um and i guess i was missing that and that was nice to finally have them together again to show just like sometimes like she needs somebody to be like no yeah it's not okay that time is collapsing and like you need to try and fix it and like you can't just like sink further into the chaos and be like this is fine (laughs) like it's not fine you need somebody to help you. Well, um, yeah, I think uh, if you want to try to go, like, analyze it and thematically, if you, like, look at their characters, Alan is living, lives in the future, and he makes every decision based on the future. 
and Nadia lives way too much in the present in the now. And the two of them need to be like, you can't just always live in the present and not anticipate, like not have an idea of what tomorrow will bring. Like, yes, everybody wants to live in the present, but you can't live so much in the now that you don't take into consideration that you have to live the next day, <laughs> like, or the next <laughs> week. Uh, and Alan's the uh, opposite of like, he can't ever enjoy the present because he's always thinking about what will happen to him next. So I guess there's like the the polar opposite of the characters. Yeah, that's very well said. I think that's <laughs> I think that's a, a great analysis. Um, and that yeah, that Alan is still struggling with that in the conversation with the grandmother. Like you can't know everything. Like you just gotta get pushed out of the nest, basically. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, Nadia does stuff like crossing the street without looking both ways when she gets nailed by the cat. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't thinking or like that type of person that does not see a future for themselves because they can't imagine past. Mm -hmm. The 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 moment, the current moment. They they live almost everything in the moment, which even Nadia going back to her past to try to fix the present for herself was still her kind of obsessed with the present and the love like I need yeah. to make the present okay for me in my day to day. Yeah. But I don't know I, if she was like making a better future for herself. I I mean I guess she was trying to. But she didn't understand like that's not what you do to make a better future for yourself. You actually yeah, you have to actually like <laughs> be there in the present like yeah when Ruth says that a few times like in the past and like be here with me right now you know like just be here with me in this moment and that's all that she wants and eventually when she sees the after time has collapsed and you know she's like I'm sorry like I messed everything up and she's like it's fine like you're here with me right now you know like for that Ruth she's like you're here with me it's your birthday like we're together and you know that you know but she wasn't there for her like in the actual timeline uh Mm. Or maybe Nadia lives in the past. Maybe that's the point. I, yeah. As we're talking about it. I'm yeah, like, maybe she <laughs> lives very much in the past. Which is kind of weird, though, because she's very impulsive. So that strikes me as a very um, present kind of person. But yeah. I guess she's more of a past-present type person. <laughs> yeah, like obsessing over the present not being what she wants it to be in each right. moment or how can it be like better, you know, but she thinks that everything goes back to that root cause of like her family. And <laughs> it's just that nothing. Yeah. I, I love that in that moment of like looking at her mom and her mom being like, would you choose me? And she's like, I didn't choose you. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have chosen you. <laughs> like basically like and people were handing out moms, but she finally understands. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily, Like, oh, all this trauma made me who I am and I'm accepting it, but just accepting, like, it happened. Like, it happened already. And I cannot change it. Well, she wouldn't have Ruth, because she looks to, like, she looks to Ruth in that scene. Yeah. And for me, it struck me as, oh, but if I didn't have this bad mom, I wouldn't have this great mom. (laughs) Like, I wouldn't have Ruth. (laughs) Yeah, that I wouldn't have had the good things and, like, focusing so much on everything that you didn't have. Uh, you miss out on what actually was great, which is that, yeah, like, she could have just not had, you know, like, what if Ruth wasn't there? <laughs> what if Ruth wasn't there? <laughs> really bad. Really bad life. <laughs> really, yeah, really bad. But I I love that character. Um, and like I said, I, I appreciate the way that they close out that chapter with Ruth. And we do get that send off finally, like at the very end where she's able to go and see the old pictures of her projected. And mm. uh, even that party shot of N- Natasha Leone. And there's so many times, first and second season, where she's obviously like looking in a mirror, um, repeating the time loop, or then looking in the mirror and seeing her mom or whoever's body she's in. And she finally just kind of smiles at herself, but it's just like, <laughs> okay like maybe i'm just gonna be okay with who i am right now (laughs) and like this is me and uh i thought that was a nice kind of visual endpoint for the whole season and i don't know there's been talk about like season three i don't know what (laughs) possible if i before was like what are we gonna do like they did give us something where i'm like okay yeah fine so 
time travel and family and okay, like her past. Like is it now that they've more done on it, Alan. Yeah. Are we gonna get I, our Alan then story that we kind of skipped over? <laughs> we kind of skipped over it, and then also just like how he's gonna live his life, and I feel like a big part of his story is like love. You know, in the first season, we see him mm. like trying so desperately to get somebody to want him that doesn't want him anymore, and then this season we see he's still going out on little dates that his mom set up, and then he's in know, he fall, falls in love with who his grandma was in love yeah. with. But then that, you know, obviously it's not meant to be, but like I felt shortchanged in that way where I was like, okay, but what about Alan? You know, like I, I would like to see if it was going to be season three and maybe we spend most of the time with Alan, you know, and maybe a little bit with Nadia if they could figure something out. Uh, maybe a little bit more about <laughs> Horse, the homeless guy. Cause he's, <laughs> he's, he's a time. big question mark. Like he's a time traveler. What's his yeah, deal? He's always there being like, oh, time shit. Like, I love, I like, when I finished this season, I, I went back and I started playing the first episode, like when she's about to do time travel. Cause I was just interested to see um, how it started. And I love that where he, she sees him across the platform, like before everything yeah. starts. He's like, you get on the train? You gotta get in a metal tube? You're gonna take a seat? Maybe go, <laughs> like, mocking her. <laughs> He's, and then he just starts giving her, like, the double fingers. And she's like, fuck you too, man. Like, you know, like he's just, <laughs> he's so, like, so chaotic. And he just keeps popping up. And I'm just like, what is his story? Like, did he just somehow, did he make a choice with time at a certain point? And now he's just constantly popping up in other people's timelines as sort of a guide? You know, like, I am intrigued. It's My minor theory. Character. Yeah, that's an interesting it's an interesting theory. My theory is he might be um, the cause of it all. Like, he might be like a god of mischief. Like, what if he is a god of time or something? And he, he, he's the one who wreaks havoc on them because he thinks they need to learn a lesson. And what if he is the, the one in control of it all? I mean, he is the one that brings them down the subway. And guides them to the one subway, and then they get out of it, and they get annihilated into this time realm thing. <laughs> like, what if Horse is some kind of time god, time lord, and he's the one that's causing the whole thing? I mean, it seems like that would be, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> It'd be very logical, I guess. Yes, he is that kind of like mischievous god like character. He's always laughing, he's always making fun of them. He always seems like he knows more than them about what's going on. But I love though that it's still like <laughs> very like human of him to be like, Okay, give me your cash. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so I, that's what makes me kind of curious about whether he's in charge or he's just kind of like part of it, a part of the system. But I mean, or maybe he would be a connection into other characters too that we kind of see in the show and then we get to see them go through their own kind of process i mean it's possible you know they said that originally natasha leon said that they pitched it years ago as a three season thing like their original pitch hmm. was three seasons um and that some stuff obviously has changed since then but i am curious what they would do with the season three um not necessarily like we need a season three in the same way. I didn't feel like we needed a season two, but this was still very enjoyable. And I got enough from it that I would definitely obviously watch a season three. Um, probably mostly I would want to see more about Alan. Uh, but do you answer this time question then, or do you just ignore it and you just play into it and you just do whatever? That's the question. Like does I guess this is a question I'll pose to you and to our listeners if anybody wants to try to answer it. Um, do you think the show needs an answer to to its time travel? No. Yeah, I don't think no. so either. Yeah. But do you think if you take it further and you go into another season, you need some sort of answer? I mean, I guess you don't really need an answer because you could have your answer as simple as that. Horse is the is like the god of mischief or the time lord, and he's just doing, he's just causing this. Yeah, which like you don't need it, but I would watch it. And I guess if you're presenting me with a theory, um, 
But I don't need it. I'm never watching the show and I'm like, why is this happening? I'm just like, it's time shit. You know? <laughs> like, it's just right. Like, if it's horse, if it's the universe um, deciding sometimes like people need to be taught a lesson, you know, <laughs> or like, okay, let's maybe something happened that needs to be corrected. You know, like we don't, we don't want Nadia and Alan to die. Like they actually should be there, you know, or there should be a timeline in which they helped each other. Um, I'm fine with that. I really, I usually am against having like a concrete answer in stuff like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it is more fun to have your own theories. And then I also feel like sometimes if you box yourself into a corner, it doesn't give you any room mm -hmm. uh, I guess to have fun. But maybe you're right. They would have to do that in a season three because otherwise I'm like, how are you going to have a whole season three without, you know, and what but, are you going like, to do in it? But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I guess it's just kind of like the, the time traveling is a way to explore character and themes and all that. And it, I don't think sci-fi or fantasy aspects always need to make sense to, to, to tell the story you want to tell and to explore it. Uh, something i think that it's just a fold to do it like it helps you in telling us the story you want to tell i agree but i don't know that could bother some people like there could be a there could be people out there who are like ah, what is this and why is this happening <laughs> and i need some kind of reasoning for it i mean i don't think that this is this kind of show but I would say, like, something like The Leftovers, like, yeah, we needed some kind of conclusion. <laughs> like, what is going on? But I think that's a very different show. I don't think th that's what this show is trying to do. I think this show uses time travel to to explore uh, themes and characters and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like the... The journey, going on with the character, and like we both thought we're both all like character driven people. You know, we've talked about that. You mentioned it with Stranger Things. Like we are always going to prioritize characterization, like over the plot points. Um, and the, yeah, this show specifically really feels like yeah, we want to follow Nadia, we want to follow Alan, like we want to see how they change and what they learn. It's not that every episode I'm like, how are they going to figure out what's going on with time, you know, or find who's responsible? Like, I'm not thinking about that. I don't especially care about it. If you gave it to me, I'd watch it. I mean, it wouldn't you know, bother me. No, yeah, if we got a whole thing about horse, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> it would be really interesting, but I don't feel like you need it. And even if you gave it to me, I would still maybe think about my own stuff, you know, like I wouldn't necessarily be like, okay, this is exactly what happened. It's just you're giving me maybe, you know, like maybe this is the explanation. Mm -hmm. um, I can enjoy a season like that, but I, I liked it. I was missing, I guess like this, uh, this perfect thing from 2019, maybe also just the nostalgia for, <laughs> for 2019. No, I think the show did something that a, sh a lot of shows hadn't done yet. It was definitely original. I mean, I know it's a Groundhog's Day sort of thing, uh, but I felt like it was original in its take on it. And no, I think I think the first season was just doing something really special that can't be recreated, and that's where season two was always going to fall, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. No matter what, they weren't going to be able to have what they had in season one. But I feel like with what they had, and aside from our criticisms of it, uh, it's a pretty solid season. Like, I would suggest anybody that enjoyed season one to watch season yeah, two. Yeah, it's enjoyable. I mean, if if you listen to the spoiler discussion and you hadn't watched it or you were hesitant to watch season two, go for it. It's also short. It's really short. <laughs> so yeah. there's no harm in it. I think it's good, en good enough, fun enough. Um, there are some really great moments, some really great scenes. Even the drug trip is was probably one of the most visually well done drug trips I've seen on screen. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, it was worth it was worth the watch. And I hope everybody 
feels that way, even though it did have some hiccups. I, I think most people will come away with it was it was a decent season two. Oh. Not everything has to be season one, though. And that's another thing I think we've we as consumers of shows have gotten too used to. Like they come out with these really strong season ones, right? And then a lot of time they don't. A lot of times they don't have ways to plan, especially with like Netflix shows, because they don't know if they're getting how many seasons they're getting. I mean, I guess that's TV in general. I don't know how many seasons they're getting, but I feel like especially Netflix has really strong first seasons. But because they usually cancel these shows or they give them two seasons off the bat. And then they cancel these shows. I, I, something about it, I think, just causes the opening season to be extremely strong. And then things wane. Or or they make two really strong seasons and they cancel the show. And they don't get to actually get to their conclusion. So I think, I think sometimes we... We don't let we like we are we're not okay. What am I trying to say? I think that, like a lot of times we're not okay with subpar seasons or seasons that are just a little lesser than the first season. But that's because all we get are like these extremely strong seasons, and they go nowhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, have you noticed that no. lately? Yeah. That like we get really strong first seasons, and then the shows kind of a lot of shows go nowhere. Um, and I feel like that must have something to do with like the culture of TV now. That we're not used to <clears throat> getting the second season, so we're not used to that feeling of like, okay, it's not. It's not first. As- yeah, but it's okay if it's not as good as the first. Yeah, it makes sense that maybe it's not going to be as good, and it doesn't. Like we're not just accepting of it. Yeah. Yeah, like, we're not just accepting, like, because remember, like, back in the day, it was just, like, you loved this show, and it was coming out with another season, and you looked forward to the next season, um, and most of the time, you knew it was getting a second season if it was a really good show, and you weren't worried about even getting a third season. Like, odds are you weren't worried about it at all until, like, season five. (laughs) Um, So, I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it, like, that we aren't okay with things that aren't the first season anymore because there are like if you look from back in the day there's always a season that is not as good as the other seasons um but that's not necessarily a bad thing you know like it could be less than some other seasons but you understood that you needed another season to get the character development for the next season yeah like, I don't know, I just feel like there's not an acceptance of, like, it's okay that not everything, not every season is as good as the first season. No, yeah, I think you're definitely right. And it's it's fine to be, like, critical, uh, but also having those expectations too high and then not being able to appreciate, like, we're talking about, like, there's a lot of stuff that's great about season two, Maybe in some ways it's not as good as season one, but that doesn't mean that it didn't achieve something. And it also was that we can lesser. It wasn't lesser. Yeah, it's it's different. It's different, and it's also I can't expect them to be able to create that perfect execution of season one because it's, it's the all first time off. you saw it. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time we saw it, and it felt yeah you know, like a perfect little thing at the time, and not like something I had seen before. You know, obviously pulling from other stuff, but it felt very uniquely like these people came together and made something special. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think that a show should be punished for being really good. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> right, right. Like this was so... Season one was so spectacular that now because season two is just good, it's crap. Like, no, it's good. <laughs> it's still good. Yeah, it's really good. And, you know, season two was really good. I mean, season one <laughs> was really good. And it's just... It's uh, it's different, and you know, if you're watching season two because you watched season one, you wouldn't have season two without season one. So that's mm, true. You're right. You need it, and maybe we'd watch a season three, and the season three would be perfect. But you it could be better. Third. Like yeah. going back to even like the beginning conversation of the show was Stranger Things, and how season two wasn't as great as season one, but then season three was really good, and. I think it's okay yeah. to let shows go through these cycles. Like we don't get, maybe it's that we don't get the cycle anymore. You know, we only get yeah. those sorts of cycles with 
very limited amount of shows. Like the fact that Stranger Things is in a fourth season is incredible. <laughs> yeah. And getting a five. So. <laughs> and in getting a five. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I think it's actually like I miss shows going into longer seasons. Because there's so much you don't get. Like, I don't know. Like, that was, that's like kind of the point of TV in a way is that you get attached to these characters a lot of the time. And it's, you follow them through the seasons. You know, otherwise it would be a limited series, like what we cover. <laughs> no, it's, it's making me think of, I realize now that I did close a chapter for myself in finishing This Is Us, which recently ended after six <laughs> seasons. Like, it's a perfect example, I think, probably, of people that watched it of, like, there were some times where I was like, I don't know what's going on here. This is, we didn't need this. Or maybe this season, yeah, it was kind of a weaker season. But having all that time, it was very hard to close the door on that. I know people had extreme emotional responses to the show ending, and I kind of did, too, simply because we've spent so much time and you really feel like you got to know the characters for years. You got to watch mm -hmm. them full into who exactly they were supposed to be so it's very satisfying in that sense um and to watch a show that goes on longer and i feel like maybe yeah maybe people have an obsession with that idea of like ending it at the perfect time which i agree that sometimes a show can go on too long but in that eagerness to have it be perfect maybe you're cutting it off at the knees and we don't get to see some development that would have been nice you just have to put up with some episodes or a season that's not amazing you know <laughs> but yeah. it's just, it's exactly fun. Yeah, that you. I feel like you just uh, verbalized that a lot more eloquently than that. That was the point I was trying to make. Yeah, um, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, anything else? Any final thoughts on um, Russian Dial season two before call it a wrap? I think so. I, I mean, I'll say that Natasha Leone. I think is really she is the show. She's acting her ass off sometimes. Just her face just her reactions to looking in a mirror, like her baby self or her mom or whatever <laughs> it was. It was like perfectly portraying like the emotion. Like you could see like her face twitching, you know, like there's something mm. going on under there. Um, I was very, I'm always impressed with her, but I was very impressed with her throughout the entire season. She was able to okay. show range this season, a lot of range. Um, and yeah. I don't even know if we got that much range out of her in Orange is the New Black. So yeah, it was, yeah, I was impressed. She did a phenomenal job, especially with the the last two episodes, uh, with the the time chaos and saying goodbye to Ruth and and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah. She um, she's something special. She's got some magic. Uh, she has a very specific thing that she does, but she does it well. <laughs> <laughs> she does. <laughs> okay, so uh, next week. Uh, we might get an out, if we get out an episode for Under the Banner of Heaven uh, for episodes six and seven to wrap up that show, uh, it will be late in the week, if that. <laughs> so uh, I I will see what happens. It's up in the air um, when when we get back from this, with this weekend. This <laughs> So, uh, We'll try to get out under the banner of heaven uh, sometime next week. Uh, if not, I don't know. So watch some of these, catch up on some shows. Tell us what you're watching in the meantime, if you care to. Uh, and then tune in next week or the week after when under the banner of heaven comes out. And have fun. Enjoy Stranger Things season four. I think everybody should be watching it. I think if you didn't watch season three, go watch season three. I think this show is worth it. It's very fun. It's endearing. The horror aspect almost doesn't even matter to me. <laughs> um, so go catch up on some shows uh, and enjoy. I, I will be enjoying my week, I think. You will. That's what I I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening. Share the show if you are enjoying it with someone. Uh, reach out to us if you have some theories on who horse is uh, or some theories on where they could go at season three of Russian Doll. Uh, let us know what you're thinking. Uh, 
if you even uh, let us know how you're thinking about Stranger Things Season 4 if you're watching it. Give us a shout out. We'd love to talk. So thank you for listening. Until next time. Goodbye.